Hey everyone, welcome back to another video here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Attack KB room on Try Hack Me. So that being said, let's go ahead and dive right in. So first thing you're going to have to do is join the room, um, and then we'll go ahead and dive into task one. I'm attacking what now? Ever caught wind of a new vulnerability on Twitter or found something weird when examining a box? Fear no more, Attacker KB is here to make sense of it all. Throughout this room, we'll be examining how we can leverage Attacker KB both as an attacker and a defender to gain further insight into the ever-changing landscape of vulnerabilities. So you can click on this, it'll actually bring up Attacker KB. Uh, there is a standalone version of the virtual machine used in this room. It's actually in the room source. We can take a quick peek of that. Um, that is over here. Uh, you can do that if you just want the standalone CTF experience. Uh, it does go a little bit further in this room for just going through the box. But that being said, we'll go ahead and dive right in, and you can also download that. So task two, discovering the lay of the land. Uh, we can go ahead and deploy this, and then we'll start reading. Uh, in this specific task, we'll be starting with the perspective of an attacker in a black box assessment. Start by deploying and scanning the box in order to discover what has been installed. We have a nice pretty pink photo here at the top. Uh, deploy the virtual machine attached to this task. This deployment period will take about two minutes. Perfect. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and scan it. What non-standard service can be running on or found running on the high port. So we're going to go ahead and pause the video and we'll be back once this is up to launch our scan. All right. Now the box is up and running. We can go ahead and switch over to our terminal here. And I've gone ahead and created an AKB folder or directory here and then I've made two direct or three directories rather uh, one for exploits uh, then another for loot and then another for scans uh, so with this we can go ahead and run an mmap scan here we'll do tac sv tac sc for common scripts we'll do all output times we'll put them in the scams directory and we'll just call it initial and then we can go ahead and grab our target ip here and we'll put that there and then I'm actually going to grab because I'm impatient dash vv and then we're going to go ahead and let this run so it looks like we've already found two ports 22 which is going to be ssh and then port 10,000. Uh, we can go ahead and let's actually check out that port in our web browser so we'll go to that and then 10,000 to see if anything's running there and it looks like we have uh it's running in ssl mode so we can go ahead and go back here we'll do https and bypass the security risk and it looks like we have Webmin running here. Uh, let's go ahead and flip back to the room and see what it wants us to do. Scan the machine with MMAP, what non-standard service can be found running on the high port. That is going to be Webmin. Uh, further enumerate the service, what version of it is running. Uh, let's see if our scan is done. And it looks like it is. So again, we have SSH here and it's running, it's just in Ubuntu, it's the common installed version. Uh, as of the time of recording, this version doesn't have any vulnerabilities, so this is just nice to know that we could potentially SSH into the box if we find a private key or credentials, uh, but it looks like we're going to be focusing on this webmin port, and it's running version 1.890, so we can put that here, 1.890, press enter, and that is correct. Uh, visit the web page generated by the service. You should encounter an error due to the SSL being present. Uh, change the URL to HTTPS and ignore the exception. After this, view the certificate. What hosting can we find in the certificate details? So we can do that by going up here. And then we should be able to view the certificate here. Uh, da, 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 da. Details. Interesting. Okay. Um, We should have it on here. This is just going to tell us that the host name of the box is uh, source. Um, I'm probably missing it here. Yeah. Either way, uh, this will show us that the box name is source. You can dig around in there and you'll find it. We'll go ahead and just type in source. And that just gives us a little bit more situational knowledge on the machine. Sometimes you do need to put in source to bypass this actual, uh, security restriction. Sometimes webmin's just not happy about that. Adjust your Etsy host file accordingly to include the newly discovered host name or revisit the web page in question. Uh, since it's letting us load without adjusting the host name, we're not going to actually do that. I will demonstrate how to do that real quick. Uh, we can do uh, 
nano etsy host and we can go through here and it looks like i've already got source in here but you would just do it exactly like that so perfect uh so we've got that in there in case we would need it in this case we don't actually need that so we can bypass that step uh let's move on to task three learning to fly now that we've discovered a strange service running on our target webman is technically not all that strange but it is out of the ordinary for what we're seeing here let's move on to further research to discover possible exploits and how valuable they might be with attacker kb first let's navigate to attacker kb you don't actually have to authenticate here you can just go to the site and accept the cookies um, attacker kb is similar to exploit db with a higher degree of information surrounding vulnerabilities and the exploits therein associated with them so this is essentially just a search function to see how valuable an exploit is um, it's almost like a meta version of exploit DB that you can get more information here. So for example, if we go here, we can see the very, very new uh, zero login. This is actually as of today. Um, we can see that this is a very high value one. Uh, we can see that it's difficult to patch, easy to weaponize and give privileged access. And we can also run it off unauthenticated and it's common in enterprise makes it really, really valuable. Um, and this would essentially give us a pretty good insight into what uh, the exploit is and how valuable it would be to us. Um, in this specific case, we're actually going to search for webmin to see if there's anything associated with it. Um, and it looks like we have this first one that has a very high value. So let's go ahead and click into that. Let's check back on the room. Uh, the AKB dashboard. Yeah, we know that that might change. Uh, you can log in via GitHub. It's very nice, very easy. I do recommend making an account on this. It makes it pretty simple to go through and save things. And I'm actually logged in as my account here. AKB allows us to search for various vulnerabilities via the search bar at the top right of the site. Uh, search for Webnin and click on the password change, uh, password underscore change CGI. And that's actually what we have. Take a look through the assessments for this vulnerability. As an attacker, we can use this information posted here by other members to determine how, valu uh, how valuable an exploit might be and any tweaks we might have to make to exploit code. Similarly, as a defender, we can leverage these comments to gain additional situational information for vulnerabilities, allowing us to gauge how quickly we might need to patch them. Uh, which version of webmin is immediately vulnerable to this exploit so first thing with the blue team side of things uh we can go through and say for example today with the zero logon uh vulnerability we can go through onto attacker kb as a defender and see hey how bad is this is it being exploited in the wild is this something i need to care about do i need to escalate this and get it fixed like right here right now uh so that it provides a lot of value both to offense and defense in that way let's click back in here and if we go through the assessments, that's just what these comments are down below. We can see this top one here uh, that says in the technical analysis, this was a supply chain attack. And we'll go ahead and open that for taking a look at later. The backdoor was introduced in a version that was exploitable in the default installation. Uh, version 1.890 is the money. So that is going to be a version that is vulnerable by default. Uh, note that SearchForge, uh, so this is just a quick note about it. Um, we do note here that there is a Metasploit module for this, so that's particularly nasty. So which version of Webmin is immediately vulnerable to this exploit? It's going to wait 1.890. And what type of attack was this? Note we're looking for how the code was added, or how this was added to code for Webmin, not how this results in remote code execution or RCE. It's going to be a supply chain attack. Can you find the link to a, a post on the Webmin website explaining what happened? What day was Webmin informed of the O-Day exploit? So we can go to Webmin's website here and we can see that this is a quick little security briefing by Webmin explaining what exactly happened. This is great that um, a lot of companies will do this once they've had an issue just to kind of explain what happened. Uh, so we can see here at some time in April 2019, the Webmin development build server was exploited and a vulnerability was added to the password underscore change dot CGI script. Because the timestamp on the file was sent back, it did not show up in any git diffs. Uh, so that can be an issue where attackers will actually go through and mess with the timestamps on the file. And then you don't actually know that it was tampered with, which is a really big problem. It makes forensics, which is what they're alluding to here, 
Very, very difficult, and it sucks. Uh, the vulnerable file was reverted, uh, so we can see it was reverted here. And then on September 10th, 2018, uh, the vulnerable build server was decommissioned and replaced. And then looks like August 17th, 2019, they were informed of the O day. So we can take this. Let's see if this is going to be the exact format that we need. And it looks like that is it. So they were informed of the O day on that specific instance. Uh, last but certainly not least, let's find a link to our exploit. What can we see in the assessments? Uh, we can see in the assessments that a Metasploit module was added for this backdoor. What poll number was this added in? So we can click over here and we can see our poll number here. It's going to be up at the top. So 12219. We can copy that. And that's just confirming that you have found the correct exploit. Uh, once you've located the exploit, let's move on to task four. And we're going to do exactly that. So task four, blasting away. Now that we've gained some insight into the vulnerability and its associated exploit that we've discovered, let's move back into the scope of an attacker. In this task, we'll be leveraging Metasploit. If you have any difficulties here, I suggest checking out the RP Metasploit room. That's just linked here. It's a fantastic room. This is another room that I created, um, and it'll help you get used to Metasploit. Launch Metasploit now, as we'll be leveraging the Metasploit module for this exploit. So we'll open up our terminal, and we can do MSF console. And we'll switch back over here. Mark that complete because that'll take a moment. With Metasploit open, search for and select the exploit we previously investigated. So we can take a look here. We'll mark that as completed. And we can see that this was added as Unix web app webmin underscore backdoor. So we'll search for this in just a moment. And Metasploit is all started. So we'll search for uh, webmin underscore backdoor. And we can see that sure enough, it's in there. So we'll use zero, clear the screen. I'll make this just a tad bigger and we'll show our options. So it looks like we need to set at a minimum our host. And then in this specific case, we're gonna have to set that SSL is in use because it has been enabled. And then we're gonna have to set our L host. So we'll do set L host ton zero since we're connected and we can see that just down here for the interface. We'll set our hosts and you don't actually need that in caps. It doesn't really matter. And we'll copy this and paste that there. And then set SSL to true. Cool. And we'll clear the screen. I'll show these options again once more for you guys. And let's flip back to the actual uh, page here. Now that we've selected our exploit, set the options provided appropriately beyond L ho or our host and L host. What is the third option we must set to true? That is going to be SSL. Uh, we're in the exploit. What is the user flag? So we'll go ahead and run that. You can just do that with run. And uh, there we go. Who am I? And we have root. That's a no bueno. Cool. So we can go ahead and cat our user flag. Uh, ls home. Uh, we have one user dark. So we'll cat home dark user.txt. And then cat root root.txt. Perfect. So we'll copy those in. And then we will wrap up the room here. Once you've completed gaining the root flag, move on to the fifth and final task. Go going further, want to get even more out of Attacker KB? Check out the Attack or AKB Explorer by Horshark. This is actually one of our uh, bot devs. He runs the uh, Discord bot dev team in the Try Hack Me Discord. I highly, highly recommend checking out his tool. It's similar to Searchploit, but it works for Attacker KB. It makes it very easy, especially if you want to get some insight from your command line. Uh, written in Python, AKB Explorer provides similar functionality to Searchblade, expanded to encompass the features of AKB. Using this tool, you can search by name, CVE, and username for posts. You can check it out there. So we'll take a quick peek, and we can see it's very, very easy to install. It's just running on Python. Um, one thing you do need to do is grab your API key and you're pretty much ready to go. There's some base usage here, and I'll let you guys check that out. I do highly recommend checking this out. It makes it very easy to get some more insight as you're going through and trying to figure out if an exploit is valuable. So read the above and keep learning, and there we go. So we've gone ahead and completed that room. That is gonna do it for today. If you have any further questions, feel free to hop into the official Try Hack Me Discord or the DarkSec specific Discord, and otherwise, happy hacking.